There is a great deal of confusion about the Holy Spirit. Who or what is He? What is His ministry in the world today? How does one even get the Holy Spirit? Today, on Enjoying the Journey, we learn what Jesus taught about the Holy Spirit. What better way to learn about the Holy Spirit than to learn from the authoritative words of Jesus Christ Himself? Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. We all have our down days. I mean by that days when the circumstances are less than exciting, days when sometimes even without explanation our spirits are low. And yet, it's on those low days when very often the Lord is teaching us some of the highest truth. Such was the case in the experience of the original disciples in John chapter 14, 15, and 16. These are low days for them. They are on the verge of the greatest trial of their life. Christ is leaving them. By the way, Christ is also on the verge of the greatest trial of his earthly life and ministry, his own death. They're surrounded by hostile people. They're people that want to put them to death who are hunting them. And they've just come through a round of questions. If you read the previous chapters, Lots of questions, some uncertainty. They're filled with fear. They're they're facing uncertain days. And yet it is at that very moment that Jesus begins teaching them the deepest and highest truths about the Holy Spirit. Ponder that just a moment. In fact, I think the setting for this scripture is really important to understand. In John chapter 14, they are in the upper room. You know the upper room where Jesus washed their feet and where they celebrated the a Passover supper, and Jesus instituted the memorial supper, what we now call the Lord's Supper. It was in that upper room where Jesus begins this conversation. In fact, I can prove that to you. Read John 14, come to the end of John 14, right in the middle of his conversation, the last phrase, John 14, 31, he said, Arise, let us go hence. And then immediately when you get to John chapter 15, he begins this way, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. I really believe they've left the upper room. Uh, They've left the old city of Jerusalem. They have crossed now uh, the, the brook. They are in the Kedron Valley on their way to the garden. I believe Jesus, like he often did, is using an object lesson. He's perhaps even holding a vine or a branch in his hand or at least pointing to them in that agricultural area, and he's teaching them truth that they need to understand. So John 14, they're in the upper room. John 15 and 16, they are on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane. And it's at that moment where Jesus says, John 14, verse 16, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. It might interest you to know that one-third of all that Jesus said in this final discourse that he gave to that little group of disciples, to that first church, one-third of everything he said in this three chapters is about the Holy Spirit. Think of that. 31 verses in three chapters are all about the Holy Spirit. And watch this. The Holy Spirit of God works in the upper room and works in the valleys. Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit seated in the upper room in John 14. Then he talks about the Holy Spirit walking through the Kedron Valley on the way to the Garden of Gethsemane in John 15 and John 16. Friend, the Holy Spirit of God works in every setting, in every circumstance, in every location. Whatever's facing you, whatever's surrounding you, whatever's filling your heart with fear at this moment, the Holy Spirit of God is real and he is present. Now, I will point this out to you. This is a truth that only believers can take to heart. You see, sometimes people want to talk about the Holy Spirit, and they don't know Jesus as their Savior. You, you can't skip Jesus and get the Holy Spirit. It doesn't work that way. No, I would point out to you that by the time Jesus speaks these words in John 14, 15, and 16, Judas is already gone. In the previous passages, he's already left the upper room to go to, to make his final deal to betray Christ. That's very important because only Those who are indwelt by the Holy Spirit can know the Holy Spirit. Only a true believer can understand the person and work of the Holy Spirit of God. And so we come today to John 14, verse 17. In our last study, we talked about the Holy Spirit being the comforter. Notice how the verse ends, that he may abide with you forever. 
And then we continue, verse 17, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I'd like you to do something. I'd like you to mark the last words of verse 16 and the last words of verse 17 and connect the two in your Bible and in your thinking. In verse 16, the Bible says that he comes to abide with you forever. Don't miss those words, forever. And then the last words of verse 17 says that he will be in you. Connect that. In you forever. (laughs) That's glorious, isn't it? More than four decades ago, I took the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I, I entered into the family of God. On that day, the Holy Spirit of God came to live in me. Might I say, in the words of Jesus, he came to live in me forever. You see, throughout the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon men. He would indwell people, but he could also be removed. For example, Saul, the Holy Spirit of God, came upon Saul and uh, mightily used Saul. But there came a moment uh, when the Holy Spirit of God was withdrawn. Uh, The Holy Spirit of God was taken away from Saul. You do not find that in the New Testament because the Holy Spirit of God comes to live in every one of us. It's It's a fulfillment of prophecy. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse number 27, Jesus promised that he would put his Spirit within us and that his Spirit would cause us to walk in his statutes. In other words, that the Holy Spirit would not simply be with us or on us, He would be in us. And yes, praise God, in us forever. We've learned already that the the Holy Spirit is the comforter. Now we learn He is the constant. He is in you. Circumstances around you uh, may change, but that doesn't change the one who is in you. He is untouched by externals. And then He is in you forever. Time doesn't change Him. He is the eternal Spirit. Uh, He is... He is the never-changing one and the the never-departing one. He is in you forever. In fact, when your Bible opens in Genesis 1, the Holy Spirit of God is there moving on the face of the waters. Guess who shows up on the last page of your Bible? Revelation chapter number 22, the Spirit and the Bride say come. The, The Bible begins and ends with the Holy Spirit. Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit has always been. He is at this moment, and He will always be. And the work of the Holy Spirit and the life of the believer does not end. It carries us through this entire life, and then the Holy Spirit ushers us into the presence of God forever. May I testify and tell you, that's some high truth that will help you on low days. (laughs) When you're having a hard time, when your spirit is low, his spirit is not. And when your circumstances are changing, his Holy Spirit is within. When When time is moving on, the eternal Spirit of God is still with you. He's the constant in life. I've lived long enough now to know that everything changes. Your family changes. Your body changes. Some of you are saying amen right there. Uh, Your feelings change. Your thought processes change. Your financial standing may change. Your job may change. Uh, your, Your house, the location where you live may change. All of that may change, but there is a constant to the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is that constant? He is the person of the Holy Spirit. So everything may be shifting and shaking on you today. Run to this truth. The Holy Spirit of God, the comforter, the spirit of truth, lives in you, and he promised he would live in you forever. As we listen to the teaching from our Savior about the Holy Spirit, we can be confident that we are learning from the one who is the personification of truth. We hope you'll make your way to our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, and search for helpful resources with more teaching about the Holy Spirit. You'll find podcasts, articles, and full-length Bible messages that will deepen your understanding about the Holy Spirit. Also on our website, you can click on the events link and follow Scott's preaching schedule. If he is preaching in your area, he would love the opportunity to meet you. Once again, thank you for joining us today. We hope you'll share today's podcast with a friend and make plans to join us next time on Enjoying the Journey.